So the shipping container delivery guy just called me and he says, hey, a slot opened up. Can I deliver it right now? It's 5 p.m. on a Friday. We're not ready for him at all, but he's gonna be here in about an hour. I am excited about this though, because it looked like it was gonna be about another week before they could make it up here with our shipping container. So we just saved a week on the timeline for this project. watched our dozer video that's where he and dozer dave had a little too much fun breaking up some rock and it's pretty chewed up right now we need room for a 20-foot trailer and an f-450 to turn around up here and i think the only place for them to do it is where the dozer is here we go i've actually never started this thing the previous owner and our friend Dave that helped us buy it are the ones that have started it every time. So I hope I remember. I'm standing very far away because I have no idea what's about to happen. Turn the gas on for the pony motor. Next step is to turn that on. <laughs> It has a dead battery. All right, try again. He got the pony motor started. Just like any new equipment, this thing is gonna take some getting used to. It is a handful right now. There's a lot of things to remember. A lot of it's really counterintuitive for me right now. Um, it's really intimidating to just hop on and operate it, especially because the left brake doesn't work, which makes things a little extra hard because the only way to turn left is to turn right in reverse. Hey, Cordy's coming along and smoothing out the big mess I just made in the road. Well, do you think we're playing done playing musical equipment? <laughs> I kind of like this spot for the dozer. I think that might be its new home. We just got the call that he's about 20 minutes out, so we're gonna head down the road and meet down there so that he can follow us up so that hopefully he doesn't decide not to keep going. So basically we're luring him up here. All right, it is here. He's gonna follow us up, hopefully all the way to our property. <laughs> I think this is gonna work. I think everything's gonna go really well, and if not, we always have a dozer to pull him out. His trailer is the same length as our trailer, and we have towed our trailer up here many times, so it should be totally fine. He's still going. I don't know why I'm nervous. You know, it's one of those things where like, okay, the worst case scenario, he unloads it, and then we have to drag it. In the, the middle of the, of the road? In the, the middle of the road? <laughs> then what does he do? Hey you guys, he is going up the hill. Oh, he's stuck. Oh, he got stuck. Oh, I hope he's not mad. We'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Courtney and I get asked a lot how we work so well together, because the truth is that living on this hill can be a bit stressful. It's not always easy, guys, and I know we make it look easy, but sometimes it's really freaking hard. Just like we service our excavator to prevent issues down the road, we go to therapy for the very same reasons. It's routine maintenance for our emotional and mental wellness. 
BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a therapist. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages, and everything you share is completely confidential. I'm currently working with my therapist on embracing the pandemonium instead of letting it control me. So join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash ambition strikes. That's betterhelp.com forward slash ambition strikes. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. He's uh, not a super happy camper, but we got him unstuck and uh, we've gotten longer things up here, but he decided he doesn't want to bring the trailer um, any further. So I think we're gonna unload our shipping container in the middle of the road. In the middle of the road? And deal with it later. Dang it. <laughs> we have a container at the bottom of our property. That's not where we wanted it. <laughs> but at least it's here. And it's macaroni and cheese color. And it's supposed to rain for three days a lot. And I think our only option is to get this up to the shop right now. But basically we were able to pull the container off of the trailer. Riley was able to drag it kind of off the road and then Riley used the excavator to actually turn his trailer around for him. And then he was able to head back out. So we got him out of here. On the plus side, I don't think it gets dark till like 10 o'clock now. So I think we've got about an hour of daylight left. Why do we always do this stuff in the rain? You're making it, but you have like inches to spare. Okay. It just keeps coming down harder and harder and it is turning to snot out here. I'm really glad that we got it up the hill while we still could. So this is the kind of mud that sucks your boots off. That couldn't have worked out better if we'd planned it. We have a beautiful mac and cheese colored shipping container at our property now. I'm stoked to have this container here. This was the biggest piece to this project. See you tomorrow. We just realized that we haven't opened our shipping containers, so we're gonna start by doing that. A little stiff. Oh yeah, the door is bent. Hmm. Sweet. Looks like a container. It didn't come with anything. No free gifts this time. This time. The floor looks good though. Mm -hmm. The floor looks really good. There are varying quality levels of shipping containers for a container home that we built a few years ago. We used a one tripper, which is essentially a new shipping container. So for this project, we decided we could probably get away with a wind and water tight one. So we did save a few thousand dollars by doing that, but that does mean it's not perfect. 
Okay, you guys, why did we buy a macaroni shipping container? We have all the pieces together now for our permanent power system. This is something we've been working on for a long, long time, and we're super excited to share with you what our plans are. Our temporary system has worked for us, but our power needs are expanding, and we want to be able to power things like our welder, our plasma table, and not have to worry about our power consumption. I am so excited for this system. It is humongous. It's going to be so big that we almost don't even have to worry about how we use power. Part of developing our power system isn't just the components for the power system itself, but it's also where to install them, where to mount them. We have a huge solar array and we were trying to figure out how to store our batteries and they were going to take up a lot of square footage in the shop. So the plan is to use the shipping container as the base for our solar array ground mount and put all the components from our power system inside the shipping container. It's time to get officially started on our long-term residential solar and battery system. Step one is getting this container in place. <laughs> I'm pretending to be the container. Do you think we can get it between these two big trees? I think so. Up here. Yeah. It's nice up here. The further out on this point we can get the container, the better sun exposure the solar panels will have because we'll get a longer afternoon sun before it dips behind the hill. Okay, I'm looking at the compass to try to figure out which way south is to make sure that our container can be sitting perfectly perpendicular to the south facing direction. The solar panels work the best when they're at exactly 180 degrees facing due south. Another reason that we chose this hillside to put our solar array on is that it's close enough to power the shop, but it's also close enough that if we did build a home up here, it could power both. So it's kind of in between the two locations while also still being pretty hidden. So we shouldn't have to stare at it directly from the shop. I also like that with this location, we can minimize the number of trees that we have to cut down. It's kind of a jungle gym. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now where to? These are the solar panels that we're going to be installing. They're 445 watt bifacial solar panels, which means they collect sun from both the front and the back side. For the past month or so, we've had three of these panels hooked up to our EcoFlow Delta Pro, and it's been enough to power our entire property. We're planning on installing 32 of these panels total, which is gonna be enough to power anything we could ever wanna do up here. And we're excited about that because that means limitless projects. We wanted to tell you guys about these panels because it is a limited quantity available, but they are a smoking deal right now. And if you've been thinking about adding solar to your building, to your camper, to your off-grid cabin, these might be a good option for you. So I've put a link down in the description below to where you can check them out. Shake it while you walk. <laughs> oh, don't hurt yourself. Step one is clean. Step two is repair. Step three is apply. I think we've done step one and two. Do you have your fancy new brush? I'll get it. Our goal right now is to put this waterproofing membrane on because this is the wall of the container that's gonna be kind of buried and in contact with the dirt. And we're thinking that it will help just prevent the container from rusting out. Do they even know that we're burying a container in the hillside? Guys, we are burying a container in the hillside. 
for damp proofing exterior below grade foundations and walls and that it's good for metal. So, seem like the right stuff. Wondering if it's gonna look like I imagine it, like the tar lava monster from movies. So it's brown. Oh, that's not really what I expected. Seeing how big of a mess Courtney's making with this project makes me glad that I'm not the one applying that stuff because I'd have it all over myself by now. This is the site that I prepped for the shipping container. The idea is that we're gonna sink the container right here behind me, halfway buried into the hillside. I did a whole bunch of research on the internet before this, and the internet seems to think that this is a terrible idea to bury a shipping container. It's, go it's guaranteed to collapse, in fact. But I looked at that container and I thought about this site. We have a lot of rock here behind us. It's not like this bank wants to collapse. I think it's gonna work out just fine. One of the primary reasons we wanted to use a container in the first place is because it's an inexpensive, quick way to have an enclosed space. And if we did a whole bunch of site prep to try to make it so that we could bury the container, like reinforce it or backfill it with concrete or build the block wall first, well, then it wouldn't be inexpensive, fast or easy. So this might be a bad idea, but we're gonna give it a shot. We're just gonna backfill this container and see what happens. By burying the container into the hillside, we get a bonus. I hope that it's gonna give us some geothermal properties that are gonna help temperature regulate the inside of the container so that during the winter time, the batteries don't get below freezing because they won't charge when they're below freezing. And during the summertime, it should help keep the equipment a little bit cooler. And the final reason that we're burying the shipping container is because I've always wanted to bury a shipping container. I think it's time to move a container. Huh. I don't think we should bury it today because I think it would just scratch all of that off, but I definitely think we can pull it into place. One of the problems is that once I pull it up into place, there's no escape path for the excavator. So that's gonna be an interesting one to solve, but I'm gonna worry about that once yeah, we're up there. That's a problem for later. <sighs> I decided that I would let Riley drive for this one. Where do you want it hooked? Well, it's pivoting around the middle. <laughs> I wasn't filming you guys, but I am so glad that I was standing right here because Riley was pulling on the container, which meant that it was pivoting around the middle and it is about to smack into the army truck. How close the army truck am I? I don't know. 10 inches, 12 inches. How's your plan working? Not well. Why do you have a stick? Apparently we moved this up here in the rain and everything got full of mud. Oh gosh. Oh, 
this is this is a little tight right here. Oh, it's very narrow. We're not going to drop the container off the hill, right? I'm not planning on it, but I can't make any promises. So the concern right now is that the butt is kind of slipping down the hill instead of hugging up here. No. Okay. I think I was, I thought I was getting the easier job, but I don't think I was getting the easier job. All right, I need to figure out a different way to pull on it now because I'm out of room. And this container's not watertight. There's a giant hole in the roof. Huh. That they duct taped. Didn't even occur to me to inspect the roof when we took delivery of it, but now that I say that out loud. We probably should have we inspected should've. the roof. We really need it to be waterproof so that our batteries and inverters and stuff don't get ruined. So we're gonna have to weld a new piece on? We're gonna have to weld the patch over the hole. Dang it. That worked really well. I didn't expect this to go that smoothly. I think we're gonna call that good for today. We wanna let this side fully cure before we start backfilling. Well guys, this is exciting. This means that another big project is officially underway and I cannot wait to see how this turns out. That's all for this time. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.